welcome back to my channel let's get into today's video don't forget to subscribe like and comment with me i have a very interesting video that i would want you my viewers to watch till the very end now this video uncovers a lot of secrets which are hidden by christian missionaries now in this video we will be looking at a letter which was written in 1883 by king leopold ii of belgium to the belgian christian missionaries sent to the congo it is said that the essential duty of missionaries was to teach people about jesus christ and his great commandment to love god and others but this letter reveals the honest truth behind the motive of missionaries who were sent to congo come with me as i share this video of a sister sharing all these shocking reasons behind this this is really an interesting video and it is a must watch so make sure to stay glued until the very end because when i get back you know how it gets for now let's watch this sister's video i will be right back melanated dominant people sons and daughters of my ancient mother i did a stitch video about the the letter that king leopold the second wrote to the belgian christian missionaries in which he was instructing them what the real purpose of christianity was in the congo um because of some key words that was put in that was said in there TikTok completely removed the video. Um, and if you see the video now, it doesn't have sound. Um, they completely removed it off of my account. So I got the letter. I printed it. I'm going to read it to you. Leaving out some choice words. You'll know what they mean. But here we go. So this is the letter that was written in 1883 by King Leopold II of Belgium to the Belgian Christian missionaries sent to the Congo. Reverends, fathers, and dear compatriots, the task that is given to fulfill is very delicate and requires much tact. You will go certainly to evangelize, but your evangelization must inspire above all Belgian interests. Your principal objective in our mission in the Congo is never to teach the N-words to know God, for this they know already. They speak and submit to a Mungu, one Zimbabwe. They know that to kill, to sleep with someone's wife, to lie and to insult is bad. Have the courage to admit that. You are not going to teach them what they already know. Your essential, essential role is to facilitate the task of administrators and industrials, which means you will go to interpret the gospel in a way it will be the best to protect your interests in that part of the world. For these things, you have to keep watch on disinteresting our savages from the riches that is plenty in their underground. To avoid that, they get interested in it and make you a murderous competition and dream one day to overthrow you. Your knowledge of the gospel will allow you to find texts, ordering and encouraging your followers to love poverty. Like, happy are the poor because they will inherit heaven. And it and it's and it's very difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. You have to detach from them and make them disrespect everything which gives them courage to affront us. I make reference to their mystic systems and to their war fetish, warfare protection, which they pretend not to want to abandon. And you must do everything in your power to make it disappear. Your action will be directed essentially to the younger ones, for they won't revolt when the recommendation of the priest is contradictory to their parents' teaching. The children have to learn to obey what the missionaries recommend, who is the father of their souls. You must singularly insist on their total submission and obedience avoid developing the spirit in the schools teach students to read and not to reason there 
dear patriots, are some of the principles that you must apply. You will find many other books, books which will be given to you at the end of this conference. Evangelize the N-words so that they stay forever in submission to the white colonists so they never revolt against the restraints they are undergoing. Recite every day. Happy are those that are weeping because the kingdom of God is for them. Convert always the blacks by using the whip. Keep their women in nine months of submission to work freely for us. Force them to pay you in, in, pay you in sign of recognition. Goats, chickens, or eggs every time you visit their village. And make sure that in words never become rich. Sing every day that it's impossible for a rich man to enter heaven. Make them pay tax each week at Sunday Mass. Use the money supposed to be, that's supposed to be for the poor to build flourishing businesses, business centers. Institute a confessional system which will allow you to be a good detective denouncing any black that has a different consciousness contrary to that of a decision maker. Teach the N-words to forget their heroes and to adore only ours. Never present a chair to a black that comes to visit you. Don't give him more than one cigarette and never invite him to dinner, even if he gives you a chicken every time you arrive to his house. Now, this was found by a man that was born in the Congo in 1915. He bought a Bible from, like I said, a Belgian priest that forgot to remove the letter that King Leopold gave to their missionaries understand melanated dominant people that religion was always a plan to steal the land i love you and i hope this helps so many things were and are still hidden in the name of Christianity. After watching this video, we can see that actually the main reason why European missionaries were coming into Africa was not actually to preach about the gospel, but to spy and look for what they can benefit from Africa. The only way they could do this was by pretending to be Christians, by bringing the word of God. Now they knew that if they just came in using another excuse, it wouldn't have worked. So they had to use or come up with a very good way they were going to to use to manipulate Africans into believing and trusting their motive. Now, I want us to focus mainly on Congo. I have been posting videos of what is happening in Congo and clearly we can see how the missionaries who were sent there did exactly what they were told because even now, Congo is still suffering all because of its land's richness and abundance in minerals. Why was King Leopold so much interested in Congo? Contrary to his promised plans, which was bringing civilization to Congo, Congo, Leopold effectively transformed this vast territory into a personal plantation for his own profit. Now his primary interests were in ivory and rubber. In order to harvest ivory and farm rubber, the king of Belgium imposed forced labor upon the Congolese people. He set strict targets called rubber quotas, which they had to fulfill. Now when the quotas were not met or forced laborers attempted to flee, the king's soldiers were instructed to analyze them and other punishments include mutilation and flogging. Village populations decreased as Congolese families migrated elsewhere in resistance to Leopold's efforts, were worked until they were unalived, while women were taken hostage and were often left to starve. Now, due to the conscription of the Congolese people to have vest rubber, there was little opportunity to hunt or farm to provide food for themselves and their families. This led to further starvation, vulnerability to disease, and left the population in a condition of near famine. As a result of this, though the statistics are debated among historians, the population in Congo is estimated to have dropped
dropped significantly by 50% between 1890 and 1920. Large expanses of land became populated as a result of these unalivings and migrations and the birth rate is reported to have been uh, impacted. Now in the diplomatic arena, Leopold continued to claim he was helping the population of Congo despite the realities of his conduct and use strategies such as awarding medals to individual allies to harbor secure support. However, by the early 1900s, British and American Protestant missionaries in Congo had started to shed light on the atrocities they had witnessed and in response, Britain and America began to publicly condemn the actions of Leopold. Fearful that these re revelations would tarnish the reputation of their own alleged civilizing missions elsewhere, many European nations put increasing pressure on Leopold to end his tyranny. Attempting to defuse the uproar, Leopold commissioned a report that he expected would testify in his favor. Contrary to his expectations, the report published in November 1905 confirmed the eyewitness testimony with regard to the reality of Leopold's actions. Now, the Protestant missionary, missionaries sought the Pope's support in opposing the Congo administration, but the Vatican ignored requests. Nonetheless, the mounting pressure meant that in 1908, Leopold's hold over Congo ceased and the Belgian state took over the administration of Congo. In exchange for the colony, the, the Belgian government provided the king with a large sum of money and however, Leopold's legacy remained and the Belgian Congo continued to impose forced labor. Obligatory educational labor was introduced in 1933 under the pretense that forced labor was educating the Congolese with violence often used to enforce the scheme. Now, this legacy of violence and forced labor continued until the country's independence in 1960. Inasmuch as Congo got its independence, the country is still going through the same things even now. The only difference is that this time it's with different European countries who have interest in its minerals. All in all, religion was always a plan to steal the land. Thank you for watching and don't forget to share your take on this.